Welcome to Themesis, where artificial intelligence equals physics. For many of us working in the area of artificial intelligence, we recognize that there's this strong statistical physics underpinning to the fundamentals. For example, it shows up in all the classic papers, especially those by Hinton and Hinton and colleagues. And we, as for many of us, we try to get into them, we realize that it's kind of like trying to go over the ice wall in the Game of Thrones using a pogo stick. It's just not enough oomph to get over, and we don't have that elevator. So after drowning in a sea of pages from Wikipedia and all sorts of sources on all the different terms that are being used, a lot of people wind up giving up and backing off into the applications areas. And there's plenty to be done with that, and people can be kept very profitably uh, occupied and amused and productive, very, very productive, for many years. The problem is, and this is a serious problem, the AI as we know it today, the AI dominantly based on the Bolson machine and its variations and its multiple implementations top and down in a deep learning architecture, that's about run its course. It's based on a simple physics equation called the Ising equation. That equation itself is fairly old, and it was foundational to the energy-based AI as we know it today. It was foundational to the hot field neural network, then the overall simple Boltzmann machine, then to the restricted, the restricted Boltzmann machine, then to all the deep learning architectures, and there it's about stopped, even though there have been, of course, lots of applications and uh, advancements that are more of a uh, tweaking of the nature of things. There hasn't been a significant shift in the underlying equation. And that underlying equation was introduced back in 1982 by Hopfield, actually 74 if you want to go back to Little, so it's a 1974-1982 combination then a modification in 1986 by Hinton, allowing us to have the Boltzmann machine, and then work thereafter giving us deep architectures. Same equation. It's about run its course, meaning that the world is ready for a new equation. I'm adding in a little bit of an editing addendum to the whole discussion that we've been having here. There are indeed uh, alternative approaches in AI besides the Boltzmann machine-based work. So let's talk very briefly about some of the active work in planning and optimization that involves reinforcement learning, which is, as you probably know, the basis for such breakthroughs recently as AlphaGo and then uh, more re recent work, in fact, by Google. Now, the thing is that we can't talk about reinforcement learning without talking also about a related and complementary method, uh, variational Bayes. Variational Bayes is, of course, obviously based on Bayesian probability work. It also involves something called the Kolbeck-Liebler divergence, which is a difference measure between the model that you have of a system and the actual system data itself. Further, that whole variational Bayes notion rests firmly on free energy, yes, that same free energy that is foundational to statistical physics. So once again, we're cutting back to the need for statistical physics as a background. Let me add in passing that variational Bayes is a foundational method for active inference, which is being proposed by Friston and colleagues as a new method that has a, a very widespread potential and can potentially um, be the, the front runner in methods for planning and optimization and bringing systems to an alignment with new situations. So once again, we're back to the need for statistical physics. So here at Themesis, we have three primary missions. One is to provide a general sort of education in the area of statistical mechanics, statistical physics, for those who are really trying to grasp that material and bring it into their realm of neural networks. The second is to take that stat phys material and make the connections for people. Show them how it influences the architectures, the training methods, the structures of neural networks and what they can do and what they can't do. 
And then our third mission is to introduce a new kind of equation in the context of AI and neural networks. That is to say, we're going to look at the two-dimensional cluster variation method. It's in itself is an old equation. In its application here, we're going to see a lot of very exciting, promising new directions. So stay with me. I'm Aliana J. Moren. I'm the founder and chief scientist with Themesis. In later vids, I'll present all the bona fides. There are many of them. Right now, though, we're going to focus on the actual technicalities and fundamentals of the statistical physics that we need to get rolling. Join me. I'll see, see you soon. Thanks.